What's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Make My Honey. I had it in my head to make this episode for a long, long time and here it is. I finally get to do it. Today we'll compare the two giants of bourbon world currently. To the right of me, I have the George T. Stack bourbon from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It's a 2023 version of it. I reviewed it recently on this channel here. It's a good one. It's definitely a top-notch bourbon. You know, when people say something about bourbon, this is always the top five that everyone is looking out for. And to the left of me, I have the Binder Stash bourbon coming in at 144.9 proof. You know, a lot of people call this the uh, GTS color. I mean, I heard that a couple of times already. It's a very highly allocated bourbon. It's relatively new, but it's from MGP, which a lot of people are looking after. So we'll do a little blind. I'll close my eyes and do a little spin and, and then do a little blind sampling of these two and, and see what comes out on top. Is it going to be the George T. Stag that everyone loves or is it going to be the new Bender's Stash bourbon that everyone's touting as a GTS? So a couple quick things about Bender's Stash Bourbon before we get into the tasting. It's sourced from MGP. It's a 14 year MGP juice. But what MGP does is it's a company that provides various barrels of whiskeys to companies that are relatively new or they don't have a, their own distillery facility to sort of make their own whiskeys. MGP would already have thousands and thousands of barrels of whiskey they already have in hand and they sell those whiskeys to these companies that are new or they want uh, whiskey barrels that are very old and they want to sell that with their name on it. So that's what they do. They changed the name to Ross and Squip now. Uh, but I mean, I'm just gonna say it's MGP. It sounds better. Within MGP though, there's a big following for high aged MGP whiskeys. This one's a 14 year MGP whiskey. So if any whiskey that's from MGP that's over eight, nine or 10 years, I think is very highly regarded. Whiskey enthusiasts, they really look for those bottles. So this one is a 14 year MGP whiskey. So very highly sought after. Um, I think it came out sometime in 2023, but it was sold within literally a minute. The MSRP on this one is $750, which is crazy high. That's the retail price. But I mean, again, it was gone within minutes. We'll try these two out. We'll use this Lazy Susan to sort of mix it up and I'll close my eyes and spin it. And we'll figure out which one comes out on top. So I marked the glands at the bottom to show which one is Binder's and which one is George C. Stack. So B is for Binder, G is for George C. Stack. So here we go. We'll go for the first one. Very viscous, very viscous. You can see it. Let's go for the nose. Very caramel, burnt sugar caramel. A little bit of an ethanol burn. Uh, again, these are, this one is 144.9, this is 135, so they're gonna be pretty hot to begin with. Pretty good on the nose, pretty good on the nose. Let's go for a swig. Cheers, guys. This one's hot. This one's pretty hot. But hopefully I'm not turning red. That one was pretty hot on the palate. It's not unpleasant, not by any means. Actually, it's very quite pleasant. Uh, you know, it's it's a warm Kentucky hug that's going down right now. And it's long, it's long, it's quite long, it's delicious. Right off the bat, I taste a little bit of like a like herbal notes coming in. Um, the burnt brown sugar tastes are, are, are transferred from the nose. A little, little, I don't know, I feel like a leathery. Let's go for a second swig. A lot of pepper notes I'm detecting right now. Like very strong pepper notes. Maybe some nutmeg, like walnuts too. Something dried, something, something dried, dry fruits maybe. Maybe some dry oak, but that finish is real good. The mouthfeel is excellent, it's excellent. But if I were to guess this, it's probably not George C. Stout. I mean, you never know, you never know. Let's go for a third sip. A little bit sweet. Again, it's very potent and very bold. It's like a punching in the face kind of a bourbon for sure. And all the flavors are just coming in and coming in and coming in. The herbal note is definitely there. The oak presence is there. I could tell it's a very old, very mature bourbon. The finish is epic. Uh, you know, it's it's on my mouth, it's on the throat, it's on the whole tube down my down my chest. I could taste the whole thing from the second it hits the palate all the way down. It's superb. The whole experience, oh man, it's delicious. It's delicious. 
finish is still there, it's still here. The mouthfeel, like I said, is very coating. It clings and clings. The whole experience, wow. Wow, that's a good bourbon right there. Whatever it is, whatever it is, that's a good bourbon right there. Okay, let's go for the second glass right here. Mm, this one, the nose similar, but it's very sweet, very sweet and less ethanol burn on the no nostril. Very good, very pleasant. Alrighty, let's go for a swig then. This taste is familiar to me. That aged oak, sweet, you know, cherry cola-ish taste and the tickling finish that lasts long. I know what this one is, I think. Um, it's very good and it's sweeter, much, much sweeter than this one. This one is stronger, bolder. This is also two, but compared to this, I have to say this is more, a little bit more mellow, more, more rounded, more, more encased and more controlled, if I could say that, if that makes any sense. Let's go for another swig. Yeah, it's very sweet, like a dark maple syrup, brown sugar, maple syrup, vanilla. Pretty sure what this one is, but still, never know, but very good. The finish is, it's a different lingering finish. This one is like a tingle, a slight tingle, as if it's purring down your, your, your esophagus and it's going down your throat. And uh, the finish sort of lingers on, the sweet finish lingers on. This one is more peppery, more peppery and more herbally as it goes down and leaves you with that little herbal finish at the end. This one hits you like a truck as soon as it hits your palate. This one more rounded, more controlled, tiny bit gentler on the delivery. Let's go for another swig. That deep, deep oak, I definitely recognize. I have to say this is a GTS no brainer. But every time you have that GTS though, I think uh, you're never disappointed. It's it's quite an experience, so. Okay, so let's see what it is. The first one, yep, it's the B. So it's the Menders for sure. Yeah, I knew it would. The sort of the proof sort of gave it away right away. The, the 144 point, 145, basically, it's has been. The initial punch that it gives you, oh man, it's otherworldly. It's definitely an experience that you probably won't have too much. Um, and it comes with so much plethora of flavors, right? It comes with, you know, the herbaliness, the pepperiness, that nutmeg flavor, it has that dark, toasty, like sugary, you know, molasses -y flavor that comes with it. And then the mouthfeel is magnificent. It just overwhelms all the nerves in your mouth and it's just a very pleasant overwhelming. You, like you want it to overwhelm and the finish sort of just hangs on all the way down to your chest. It's actually very good. It's a different experience for sure. And this one is is G for George T. Stag. I knew it. George C. Stag, you know, people say differently, but they all taste about the same, in my opinion. I had, you know, a couple of sips of other, you know, other years, and they all are about the same. Maybe one's a tiny bit different. You taste a certain note that's more prominent in another year, but for the most part, George C. Stack tastes like George C. Stack. Like you taste it and this is, okay, this is GTS. And then it's 135 proof, but, but nobody says, oh, it drinks like 135, 140. And never, you never hear that. It always, everyone always says, oh, it drinks so nicely under its proof. Um, and that's so true about the George C. Stack. Whereas this one, like you know it's it's 140 plus, like you know it when it hits you and, and you're gonna get it whether you like it or not. Um, that kind of a bourbon, so. All right, well, there you have it guys. Uh, which one would I choose? In my humble opinion, I'll probably give it to the Bender Stash on, on this duo right here. Just by slight margin. Um, you can't, again, you can't go wrong with George C. Stack by any means, it's an, it's an amazing bourbon, but the Bender Stash is something else, let me tell you guys. If you could get a, a bottle of this or a sample of this or at a, or maybe a, a pour at the bar, I highly suggest getting yourself one. It's, it's magnificent. So, all right guys, that's all I have for you today. Appreciate your time. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on Bender Stash and George C. Stag. Do you Have you tried the Bender Stash? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know at the comment section and I'm happy to respond. So thanks so much everybody. Have a good one and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.